The Old West, a time of untamed frontiers and larger-than-life legends, was a breeding ground for some of the most notorious gunslingers in American history. These men and women were not just quick on the draw, they were masters of survival, with their reputations forged in the heat of gunfights and the dusty streets of lawless towns. From ruthless outlaws to vigilante lawmen, the West's deadliest gunslingers left a trail of stories and myths that continue to captivate us. Join us as we count down the top 10 deadliest gunslingers of the Old West, whose lethal skills and daring exploits have etched their names into Old West history. Number 10. William Curly Bill Brocious Curly Bill earned his nickname due to his thick, curly black hair. After Old Man Clanton's death, Curly Bill assumed leadership of the Cowboys, a notorious gang of cattle rustlers in Tombstone, Arizona. For a time, Curly Bill also served as a tax collector under Cochus County Sheriff John Behan. Known for his heavy drinking, his behavior became more unruly when intoxicated. One night, while he was drinking with other cowboys, Marshal Fred White approached him and requested that he surrender his pistol. As Curly Bill handed over the gun, it accidentally discharged, injuring White. Fred White, who had a friendly relationship with Curly Bill, stated on his deathbed that he believed the shooting was accidental. Consequently, Curly Bill was acquitted of the charges. Wyatt Earp testified on his behalf during the trial. However, the story did not end there. Tensions continued to simmer, and Wyatt Earp later confronted Curly Bill, resulting in Curly Bill's death. This confrontation was driven by Wyatt Earp's desire to avenge the murder of his brother, Morgan Earp. The events surrounding Curly Bill's life and death highlight the complex relationships and volatile nature of frontier justice in the Old West. Number 9. Sam Bass, Outlaw Sam Bass began his life on the straight and narrow. After fleeing from an abusive uncle, he found work at a sawmill in Mississippi. Aspiring to become a cowboy, he eventually made his way to Texas. After one season of cowboy life, he decided it wasn't for him. In 1876, Bass and a rough character named Joel Collins drove a herd of longhorns north to sell them at higher prices. Instead of returning to Texas to pay the herd's owners, they kept the $8,000 profit for themselves. Bass and Collins squandered the cattle drive earnings on gambling in Deadwood. A few months later, they turned to a new venture, stagecoach robbery. Despite holding up seven stagecoaches, they didn't make much money. Seeking larger rewards, Bass and his gang switched to train robbery. They targeted the Union Pacific Gold Train from San Francisco, making off with over $60,000, the largest single robbery of the Union Pacific to date. Bass's criminal career ended when he was wounded by Texas Rangers on his way to rob a small bank in Round Rock. He died two days later on his 27th birthday. Number 8. James B. Killer Miller James Miller often referred to as Deacon Jim, earned his nickname due to his regular church attendance and his abstinence from smoking and drinking. Despite his outwardly pious appearance, Miller was one of the most lethal figures in the Wild West. Miller did not hide his willingness to commit murder for financial gain. His fees ranged from $150 to $2,000, a substantial amount at the time. His preferred method was to ambush his targets at night. He wore a black frock coat, which rendered him almost invisible in the darkness. Hidden beneath his coat was a steel plate he wore on his chest, an early form of bulletproof protection. This added layer of defense allowed him to carry out his ambushes with a higher degree of safety. Official records attribute 14 murders to Miller, although rumors and public speculation have inflated that number to 50. His criminal activities eventually caught up with him when he was arrested in Oklahoma for the murder of A.A. Gus Bobbitt. The local community, distrustful of the judicial process, decided to take matters into their own hands. A group of citizens formed a lynch mob, taking Miller and three others to an abandoned stable to face extrajudicial hanging. Before his execution, Miller made two final requests. He asked for his ring to be given to his wife, who was a cousin of the notorious outlaw John Wesley Harden, and he requested to wear his hat during the hanging. In a final act of defiance, Miller exclaimed, Let her rip! before stepping off the box. The bodies of Miller and the three other men remained hanging for several hours until a photographer was found to capture the moment. This somber event highlighted the harsh realities of frontier justice 
and solidified Miller's reputation as one of the most feared gunslingers in the Old West. Number seven, Bell Star, Myra Maybell. Shirley was born in Carthage, Missouri. As a young girl, she attended the Carthage Female Academy, where she excelled academically and became an accomplished pianist. Growing up, Maybell was acquainted with Cole Younger and later formed a friendship with the James brothers. The James Younger gang often used the Shirley family farm as a hideout, which introduced Maybell to a life of crime. She eventually earned the nickname the Bandit Queen. In 1866, Maybell married Jim Reed, a former Confederate Army guerrilla. Reed initially attempted to lead an honest life as a farmer, but when this proved unsuccessful, he joined forces with the Starr family, a Cherokee group known for horse theft. Together with the Jameses and Youngers, they planned and executed numerous heists. Jim Reed's involvement in these activities led to his capture. While attempting to escape from a deputy sheriff, he lost his life. Following her husband's death, Maybell continued in the criminal world, organizing robberies and fencing stolen goods. She was known for her ability to influence lawmen, either through bribery or charm, to achieve her goals. In 1880, she married Sam Starr, and two years later, both were convicted of horse theft. They were released a year later and quickly returned to their unlawful ways. Maybell's life came to an abrupt end on February 3, 1889, just two days before her 41st birthday. While riding home from the general store, she was fatally shot. The identity of her assailant remains a mystery to this day. Number 6. The Sundance Kid Harry Alonzo Longabaugh, better known as the Sundance Kid, earned his nickname after being caught and convicted of horse theft in Sundance, Wyoming. Although he was reputed to be a gunfighter, there is no definitive evidence that he ever killed anyone. Following his release from jail in 1896, he teamed up with Robert Leroy Parker, famously known as Butch Cassidy. Together, they formed the Wild Bunch Gang, which became notorious for orchestrating the longest string of successful train and bank robberies in American history. As the Pinkerton Detective Agency increased its efforts to capture them, Sundance, Butch, and Etta Place decided to leave the United States and seek refuge in Argentina to evade the relentless pursuit. It is widely believed that the Sundance Kid met his end during a confrontation in Bolivia. However, some of his family members have asserted that he returned to the United States, adopted the name William Henry Long, and lived in Duchenne, Utah, until 1936. To uncover the truth, Long's body has been exhumed, and DNA testing is currently underway. The results of this investigation may finally reveal the true fate of the Sundance Kid, shedding light on one of the most intriguing figures of the Old West. Number 5. Butch Cassidy. In 1879, at the age of 13, Robert Leroy Parker, who would later be known as Butch Cassidy, lived and worked with his family on Jim Marshall's ranch in Circleville, Utah. During this time, he met Mike Cassidy, who became his friend and mentor. Mike Cassidy gave young Bob his first gun and taught him how to shoot. In tribute to his mentor, Bob later adopted the surname Cassidy. Parker's first encounter with the law occurred when he went to town to buy a new pair of overalls. Finding the general store closed, he let himself in, selected a pair that fit, and left a note promising to return and pay for them later. Despite his honesty, the merchant reported him to the sheriff, but Parker was acquitted of any wrongdoing. On June 24, 1889, Parker and three accomplices robbed the San Miguel Valley Bank in Telluride, making off with $21,000. With his share of the money, he purchased a ranch near the notorious Hole-in-the-Wall Outlaw Hideout. By this time, he had adopted the name Butch Cassidy. However, Cassidy was not particularly successful as a rancher, and it is widely believed that the ranch served as a cover for his illicit activities. In 1896, Cassidy became the leader of the infamous Wild Bunch, a group of criminals that included some of the most notorious outlaws of the Wild West. Under his leadership, the Wild Bunch orchestrated a series of high-profile robberies, cementing their place in outlaw lore. Similar to the Sundance Kid, there is uncertainty surrounding Cassidy's death. While it is commonly believed that he died in Bolivia, some relatives assert that he returned to America and lived out his later years under a different name. Number 4. Thomas Coleman Younger 
Cole Younger's life took a dramatic turn when his father was killed by Union Captain Wally. The elder Younger had severely beaten Wally for making inappropriate advances toward Cole's sister. This personal tragedy deeply affected Cole, who was already a member of Quantrill's Raiders. Following his father's death, Cole joined the Confederate Army. It is unclear when Cole transitioned into a life of banditry, but his name first surfaced as a suspect after the 1868 robbery of Nimrod Long & Co., a bank in Russellville, Kentucky. Cole and his brothers eventually formed a gang with Jesse and Frank James. Together, they carried out a series of stagecoach, train, and bank robberies across Missouri, Kentucky, Kansas, and West Virginia. The Younger Brothers' criminal enterprise came to an end on September 7, 1876, during a failed bank robbery. To avoid a death sentence, Cole, along with his brothers Jim and Bob, pleaded guilty. They were sentenced to life in prison, but were paroled in 1901. After his release, Cole Younger toured the nation with Frank James, giving speeches about their experiences in the Wild West. During this period, Cole embraced Christianity and publicly renounced his past criminal activities. He passed away peacefully four years later, carrying 11 bullets in his body, remnants of his tumultuous past. Cole Younger's story highlights the complexities of loyalty, family, and redemption in the backdrop of the Old West. His later years spent advocating for a reformed life provide a stark contrast to his earlier notoriety. Number three, John Wesley Hardin. Born to a Methodist preacher, he was named after the founder of the Methodist faith. At just 14 years old, he found himself embroiled in a violent incident when he stabbed a boy who was taunting him. This initial action set a troubling precedent for his later life. A year later, while engaging in playful wrestling with an ex-slave named Mage, an altercation ensued. He accidentally scratched Mage's face, leading Mage to seek revenge. The next day, Mage ambushed him on a path. In an attempt to defend himself, he fired three warning shots, but Mage continued to advance. Ultimately, he was forced to shoot Mage in self-defense, resulting in Mage's death. Given that many Texas state police officers were former slaves and he was a former Confederate soldier, he faced significant prejudice and had little chance of receiving a fair trial. To evade capture, he went into hiding. Despite a warning from his brother about the police closing in on his location, he chose to confront the situation directly. In a dramatic encounter, he shot all three policemen pursuing him and managed to escape. After several arrests and escapes, he eventually made his way to Abilene, Kansas, where he became acquainted with the renowned lawman, Wild Bill Hickok. During his stay at the American House Hotel in Abilene, he encountered a disruptive stranger in the adjacent room. Disturbed by the noise, he fired two shots into the ceiling. The first shot woke the man, while the second resulted in his death. Following this incident, he fled through the window and returned to Texas. His life of evasion continued with numerous run-ins with the law until he was finally apprehended. Convicted of his crimes, he was sentenced to 17 years in prison. During his incarceration, he took the opportunity to complete a law degree and upon his release began practicing law. He met his end under tragic circumstances when he was shot in the back of the head while engaged in a game of dice. His life story reflects complex legal battles and ultimate redemption, illustrating the chaotic and multifaceted nature of the Old West. Number two, Billy the Kid. Billy the Kid remains one of the most legendary figures of the Old West. His life has been the subject of numerous books, films, and songs, but the true story behind his legend is less sensational than often portrayed. While he is frequently depicted as a ruthless outlaw, the reality was more nuanced. Billy the Kid entered a life of crime largely out of necessity rather than a predilection for violence. Those who knew him personally described him as brave, resourceful, honest, and possessing a good sense of humor. Under different circumstances, he might have led a more conventional and successful life. Although it is widely claimed that Billy the Kid killed 21 people, one for each year of his life, Historical evidence suggests that he was likely responsible for only four deaths. His involvement in violent incidents was relatively limited compared to his larger-than-life reputation. In 1877, Billy began working as a cattle guard for rancher John Tunstall. Tunstall was involved in a bitter conflict with local merchants Lawrence Murphy and James Dolan. On February 18, 1878, 
Tunstall was shot by Murphy's men while he was herding cattle alone and unarmed. This event sparked what became known as the Lincoln County War. In the wake of Tunstall's murder, Billy and other ranch hands were deputized and given warrants to pursue the Murphy faction. They formed a group known as the Regulators. Unfortunately, due to widespread corruption, the governor supported Murphy, turning the Regulators into outlaws in the eyes of the law. After a dramatic escape from jail and several years of evasion, Billy the Kid was eventually shot and killed by Sheriff Pat Garrett while hiding in a friend's home. Over the years, various individuals have claimed to be Billy the Kid, but the likelihood of his survival or misidentification of his body remains low. Billy the Kid's story reflects the complexities of the Old West, where personal vendettas, political corruption, and survival intersected in a turbulent era. Number 1. Jesse James Jesse James was born in Missouri and, alongside his brother Frank, served as a Confederate guerrilla fighter during the American Civil War. After the conflict ended, the James brothers, together with the Younger brothers, formed the notorious James Younger Gang. This group engaged in a series of high-profile robberies targeting banks, stagecoaches, and trains. In 1869, the gang committed a robbery at the Davies County Savings Association in Gallatin, Missouri. During this heist, Jesse mistakenly shot and killed a clerk whom he had misidentified. This tragic error led him to seek redemption through correspondence with John Newman Edwards, the editor and founder of the Kansas City Times. Edwards, who had also supported the Confederacy, was sympathetic to the James brothers and published numerous articles that portrayed the gang in a favorable light. Through these publications and Jesse's own letters asserting his innocence, Jesse James gained significant public attention and was even celebrated as a folk hero. Although Jesse James was already well known during his lifetime, his fame intensified after his death. He was killed by Robert Ford, a member of his own gang, who shot him in the back of the head while James was at home. This act of betrayal added a dramatic and tragic chapter to James's story. In honor of her son, Jesse's mother, Zerelda James, chose a poignant epitaph for his grave. In loving memory of my beloved son, murdered by a traitor and coward whose name is not worthy to appear here. As we conclude our journey through the lives of the Old West's most formidable gunslingers, it's clear that each one left a mark on history with their incredible skill and daring exploits. Their stories remind us of a time when the line between legend and reality was often blurred, and the Wild West was a land where only the bravest survived. If you enjoyed exploring these tales of frontier heroism and infamy, don't forget to subscribe to our channel. By joining our community, you'll stay updated with more fascinating stories from history, thrilling documentaries, and in-depth analyses of the legends that shaped the Old West. Hit that subscribe button and become part of our adventure through history.